Hey, how you doing there again, folks? Me again, of course. Brandon Wenzel, come back at you. Another offering off my sampler platter. <sighs> yes, indeed, folks. Sampler platter video series videos I've been doing for a while. We're over there, trout food and drink items. I eat stuff, I drink stuff. And, folks, I'm going to talk about the stuff. I'm going to let you know all you need to know about hopefully delicious stuff that at the time I'm doing this, folks, I guess for all intents and purposes, is going to be episode two of my Lent special because. I decided to do this today. It literally was just a thing where I was like trying to come up with places to eat for dinner. And I was like, well, you know, if I didn't really want to make anything inside, although I should have because it's raining and shitty out. But I was like, eh, you know, I just want to pick something quick up and like going through. I'm like, oh, okay, there's a lot of fish stuff going on. I could go for some fish stuff. And uh, well, it turned out to be first day of Lent. <clears throat> so, Lent spectacular special episode two so what am i doing folks well i'm inside the truck i'm gonna eat some stuff i'm gonna talk about it whilst i'm doing so i'm wearing a cool shirt folks when i wear cool shirts i always like to highlight the shirt what cool shirt am i wearing boom i'm wearing my base shirt if you're not familiar with base i'm not entirely surprised you have to be kind of into the whole mega man lore stuff uh he's a antagonist of the the titular mega man he uh, showed up in the the seventh game, first one, well, first and only one for the Super Nintendo. I look, I'm just going to go on a little bit of a Mega Man tirade, so just bear with me. I am overjoyed at the fact that they came out with the Mega Man X series for the Super Nintendo, and then we got three games on it. I don't care what people say, I love all three of the, the classic games. I will say this, I will say this. I wish we'd gotten more than one Mega Man game. Now, I believe over in Japan, they did, because they got Mega Man and Base. But we didn't get that until it came out for the Game Boy Advance. Thanks, Japan! I mean, granted, you did come up with the franchise, and, you know, so, so actually thanks, Japan. But anyway, what am I doing for y'all, folks? Well, I just got through doing a review of the Northwoods Walleye Sandwich from Boom! Culver's. And while I was there, I got something else. Because, folks, we're going to do... I got things and another thing. And that's all the things. Okay. Because, folks, we're doing... Boom! It's loving me some tenders. These aren't tenders. Why are you lying to the people, Culver's? Do I have to... This has now not only become a Lent special, it has also become an expose, okay? The hard-hitting truth, because these aren't tenders, these are boom! Boom! <laughs> those are, what are those? Those are uh, jumbo shrimp from, uh, from Culver's. So yeah, they're because of the whole Lent thing, they had a whole like emphasis on their, their fish items and stuff. And I actually don't know if they always have these available. I don't think so. But I don't go to Cul like I go to Culver's occasionally. I've done some reviews for some of their other stuff. They're not a regular spot for me. But I do like shrimp. I will say this, they looked much more impressive on the pictures, but it's it's about the taste. So let's see how this goes, folks. Now I'm going to try one just straight up plain. Just straight up plain. No lemon. No cocktail sauce. Because that's going to be the baseline. Let's give this a shot. Breading is very crispy. I'm gonna be honest with you. That took a while to get to the flavor. Like the breading outside is not very flavorful. Once I finally got to the shrimp, the shrimp itself was okay. Um, seemed to be cooked okay. It doesn't have like an overly fishy taste or anything like that. <clears throat> that tasted fine. 
But like the breading outside, really, there was not much going on with that. Um, I'm gonna lie, that's some that's some pretty weak shrimp right there. Not the weakest shrimp I've ever had. I think the weakest shrimp I ever had was from uh, from a Dairy Queen one time. My dad was like, "Ah, oh, we got a coupon." I'm like, "I don't think we want to eat shrimp from Dairy Queen." And he's like, nah, "Nah, coupon." And we both agreed it was not very good, <laughs> but we got it for like a dollar off. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's pretty weak. That's pretty weak. But we have the power of lemon. By the power of lemon. We're going to swear the lemon. Cause lemon. <laughs> I shouldn't have to use lemon, folks. I'm just, I'm just going to say that right now. Okay, you know, I'm just, I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed in you, Culver's. Because Culver's, typically, they have some good stuff. And... You know, I mean, granted, they're, like, the only game on the block that's offering shrimp at the moment. So, I mean, you know, they have a little bit of a monopoly. But. Actually, no, that's not true. Because I think Popeyes might be doing shrimp right now, too. Anyway, lemon. And not only lemon. But cocktail sauce. So. And I can tell you for damn certain, I have never had Culver's cocktail sauce before. So let's open you up. Whoa, that just wanted to come out. I love cocktail sauce. Underrated condiment, in my opinion. Granted, you know, it's because it, it mostly is associated with fish, but I think you could use it on other stuff. It's tangy. It's like tangy ketchup. Tastes like cocktail sauce. I've had better cocktail sauce. I've had worse cocktail sauce. Tastes like decent enough cocktail sauce. Let's see how it does with the, the shrimp and such. Shrimp and such. I mean, it tastes good, but it tastes good because now it's got lemon and cocktail sauce on it. Um, it works well with the cocktail sauce, but then anybody who's ever had shrimp would pretty much know that. It's a thing. There's literally a thing called shrimp goddamn cocktail. I mean, with the cocktail sauce, it sort of masks the fact that the breading really isn't all that flavorful. And by the time you get through that, you've gotten to the shrimp, which at least has some flavor for it. So it does its job. I just personally wish that the... I mean, I get it. It's meant to be used with the sauce. But I personally wish that they'd gone over there, done more with the, with the coating. I just... Because even with a tinge of lemon on it... Mostly you're just getting the acidity of the lemon until you get, really, the coating is just a barrier to the shrimp. It doesn't really add anything. I mean, I guess it adds a texture experience to it, but yeah, yeah. All right, well, two things have to be asked. Would I get it again? Would I recommend it? No. No. It's not bad, but it's also not anything that good. It's, I mean, and the thing is, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's fast food shrimp. But it's also Culver's shrimp. And typically, I trust Culver's to put out, you know, solid product. And while I don't think this is a bad product, it definitely isn't anything that really showcases what I think Culver's is really good at. So I, I just, I personally, I wouldn't go back for it. Um, and as for recommending it, no, because the folks, there's just shrimp are one of those things. If you really want a good shrimp, just go get good shrimp, make it a day because shrimp, I mean, you know, as long as you're not allergic or anything like that, it's wonderful, but you need it done right. Hell go to Red Lobster. I mean, say what you will about Red Lobster, 
probably get some okay, you know, shrimp there. This, I mean, it's fast food shrimp. Even just as a convenience option, I don't think it's worth it. I really don't. Um, as for being like a Lent thing, like I said, I just got through doing a review of the the uh, walleye sandwich uh, from Culver's as well. I would say get that. And if for whatever reason you're not into walleye, I would say get the cod. This should be the last option that you go for if you're looking for Lent options at Culver's. Sadly. <coughs> anyway, folks, that's going to do it for me on this one. Five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Spectacular rest of your week. Monumental rest of month. Stupendous rest of your year. Folks, you can go there and have yourselves a truly proper shrimp-tastic rest of your life. Because, folks, I'm talking like the real stuff. I'm talking like the super tasty stuff that, you know, it's going to be out at parties and people are going to be like, ooh, that's really good. That's the kind of shrimp life I want you to have. Final two things. Number one, try to bring some positivity in the world. It's not always possible. It is, however, always appreciated. But we do can't do it all the time. I know I can't do it all the time. Here's what you're going to do, folks. You're going to try not to be an asshole. Folks, it's not always the easiest thing to do in the world. You know, whether you're observing <coughs> a religious... I don't know, Lent isn't a holiday. <coughs> a religious period of time? Sure. Uh, or not. It's important that we go over there as people. As a society, we go over there when we run into situations that are stressful, maybe distressing. Go over there, take a step back, try to mitigate the level of assholishness in our lives. Hopefully, do better for ourselves and for those around us. Very final thing, folks, do the thing. Whatever the thing is for you, that's what I want you to go out and do. Folks, maybe you're going to go over there and you're going to get, you're going to not heed my warning, and you're going to go over there and you're going to get yourself some. Some shrimp from uh, from Culver's. And maybe like me, you're going to be rather disappointed in it. So then you're over there and you're like, whoa, what was that fat guy with the Mega Man shirt talking about? Oh yeah, Red Lobster. So then you're going to go to Red Lobster. And I don't know, I haven't had Red Lobster in a while, but I remember the shrimp being decent. But maybe you're not going to be into the shrimp there either. You know, maybe you're just not a shrimp guy, it turns out. Or shrimp person. But you know what else they have there? They have those biscuits. And we all know the biscuits. Were, I don't even have to go into them. We all know the biscuits I'm talking about. So even if you go over there and it's not that great with the seafood, it's just biscuits. Just biscuits. You go over there and you eat the biscuits up. Eventually you get a nickname. You're like Biscuits McGee. And, you know, it's a little bit weird because you don't necessarily want to be associated with biscuits all the time. But then you go over there and you turn it into like a whole folk song kind of thing. You know, go over there, become a little bit of a viral sensation, stuff like that. Maybe toss me a shout out. I'm just saying. Help, help your brother Brandon out. And, uh, you know, now you're over there and you've got a viral song on the internet about biscuits. And, uh, you know, it's all... it's Folks, everybody knows that once you achieve internet fame, it's all uphill from there. Seemingly only if you're a dickbag, though. Just, mmm, the Paul brothers. I hate them so much. Just, they're just such bad people. They don't need to... Mm. Or conversely, first of all, don't support the Paul brothers in any way. Fuck both those idiots. Um, but uh, in instead of doing that, uh, maybe just go over there and, hell, maybe go over there and make yourself some delicious shrimp at home. It's not that hard to make shrimp. 